People need leaders who are willing to fight for change, whatever the obstacles, whatever the frustrations, whatever the cost in the short term. Well, with me now is Ben Harris Quinney, who is the director of Conservative Grassroots, and David Heathcote Emery, who is a former Minister of State for Europe and was a member of the Convention on the Future of Europe, which drafted the European Constitution. I take it you're not entirely surprised by today's events, are you? No, we've been here before, I'm afraid. Um, I think the um, Prime Minister was absolutely right uh, to oppose this and fight this battle. I um, mean, the results of the last, uh, last month's European elections show that people are completely fed up with more powers to the European Union, and Juncker stands for that his whole career. I mean, I, I knew him when he was Prime Minister of Luxembourg. He believes in, in ever centralization and fewer powers for member states. We don't. So it is a very, very bad day for Britain and Europe, and we, Cameron was right to oppose him. Do, do you agree with that broadly? And if so, do you think that the Prime Minister used the right tactics? Because they've been criticised as well. Well, I think that's the important point. I completely agree that uh, Europe is, is headed in the wrong direction. I completely agree with the necessity for reform. Um, what was less clear is that how the opposition to the candidacy of Jean-Claude Juncker plays into that. Because, I mean, what was never clear is what our alternative candidate was. Um, and no alternative candidate that was, was even mooted on the sidelines had any chance of winning. I mean, I remember William Hague suggesting Christine Lagarde. So the, the problem with the tactics is that we seem to be going in without an exit strategy. We were opposing Juncker, but we weren't putting up an alternative. And I think that just created this, this bizarre situation we've got at the moment where uh, defeat on the issue was inevitable. And I think a lot of European leaders are scratching their head as to what Cameron was trying to achieve. There's, there's a bit of a ridicule already from uh, the German press, Bilt, which is, as you know, is like the sun in, in Germany, says uh, uh, David Cameron is a bit like Wayne Rooney. He lines up a shot, he loses, and then he goes home. I mean, that may be the tabloid version, but there's a more serious version behind that, isn't there? Well, the big, the big question is, why were we let down by Germany? And again, I'm afraid there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of history here. I mean, I found that Germans are, are, are very very friendly and very helpful in the short term, but they always let you down. They, they cannot tolerate anything that uh, plays into deep reform of the European Union. They won't go there. I think they were duplicitous. I mean, I've talked to some German correspondents who say, fairly frankly, um, that they think that Mrs. Merkel played a different game privately from publicly. Well, I, I think we, according to the press, I mean, I'm not close to it anymore, but I think that we were given assurances, not only by the Germans, but by the Swedes and a number of others, and they let us down. Th this happened. This is the, the Europe of trade-offs and deals and offstage uh, bargains being struck. People are fed up with that. We want someone to run Europe on behalf of the people. We want a people's Europe, not a politician's Europe. Juncker is an old-style fixer from the past. And if we couldn't come up with a better candidate, why, why didn't they? Do, do, where do you think this leaves uh, Mr Cameron's wider ambition, which is to reform uh, Europe and then to go to the British people and say, look, we've got a good deal here? That's the, that's the very important question. I think the only reason that this is, this is relevant and, and being paid so much interest in from the, from the British press um, I don't think the Germans or the rest of the Europeans have been duplicitous at all because I spend a lot of my time talking to German politicians and Spanish politicians and they give the, the, the case that there's very little chance of any significant reform on any of the European Union treaties. Uh, so I think the next thing that David Cameron needs to make clear to the British public is exactly what he hopes to achieve in the reform process because what I'm hearing, and I think what a lot of other people are hearing from the continent, is that he has no chance of achieving any of the key things that the British people want, which is um, a change to the free movement of people and a change to the ever closer union policy, both of which are enshrined in the European treaties. And I think Dave is absolutely right in saying that the Germans have no intention of changing that. But there was, I suppose, from your point of view, a glimmer of hope where the Prime Minister suggested that there was uh, the opening to change, there's other big jobs coming up that uh, we'll see where it goes, even though he did say it was a bad day for Europe. Perhaps he meant it was a bad day for Britain in Europe. Well, I think it's a bad day for the people of Europe. I mean, they, they, they sent a clear message last month that they are fed up with it. I mean, not just here, but in France and a lot of other countries. They, they want profound change. That's not an offer, certainly not from, from the, the Germans. And I think it, 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 what we've got to do is it's tough on our game here. I mean, w w I hope that David Cameron's next step will be to, to go for change. And he's got to toughen up. He's got to make clear that if we don't get a, re a real change in our relationship uh, with the European Union, based primarily on trade plus... Uh, 
know, friendly cooperation where we can. So it wouldn't be a complete isolation. I want, I want a relationship with Europe, but not the present one. But if we don't get that, we've got to leave. And that's got to be made clear in the negotiations. And I don't think he's gone there yet. And I think this whole fiasco over the Juncker presidency, I think, showed yet again that the politicians in Europe, the leaders of Europe, are not prepared to go with us to the sort of Europe which we want on behalf of the people of Europe. Thank you both very much. Thank you.